and she makes cute little animal characters <laughs> when she talks, so you'll notice some of that rat behavior while she's talking. <laughs> um, but she's a fellow rat lover, and we'll miss her, but we'll try to keep her around for a bit, and she'll tell you a bit about her research with me this past year. Good afternoon, everyone. As mentioned, I've completed my honors research under the direction of Dr. Tiffany Donaldson, with the support of our wonderful lab team and an immense help from my grad mentor, Laura Grace Willens. My thesis is entitled Enrich Pre-Weaning Environment as an Intervention for Neonatal Hypoxic Ischemic Injury in Long Evans Rats. So here's just a brief overview of what I'll be talking to you all about today. I'll go through my introduction, which includes a thorough background, which is what is hypoxic ischemic injury, the prevalence and mortality rates, brain areas afflicted, and neurological outcomes. Then I'll move through my methods, which includes how we induce the injury, as well as the testing we performed. And next, I'll give you a brief overview of the results and what we found. And finally, I'll talk a little bit about how we interpreted those results in the discussion. So what exactly is hypoxic ischemic injury? That's the question of the day. <laughs> what, um, well, it's a severe form of white matter damage resulting from birth asphyxia. Uh, and this is in term infants that we're looking at. So this is 37 weeks and above. So what are some ways that this asphyxia can occur? This, these are events that take place in utero, things like placental insufficiency, maternal hemorrhage, stroke, infection, and inflammation. So this white matter damage minimizes cerebral blood flow to the fetus, and this results in oxygen deprivation. This ends in motor, cognitive, and behavioral defects. So how often does this all occur? There's definitely a heightened susceptibility due to fetal stressors. These are things like malnutrition, maternal drug abuse, and maternal alcoholism. So this occurs in one to eight out of every 1,000 live births. As far as how often this results in severe outcome or death, the mortality rate for severe cases is 60%, while the moderate cases, it's 10%. So that's still a lot. So what brain areas are affected as a result of the injury? Necrotic and apoptotic cell death are seen in four main brain areas. So just to brief you on what that really means, um, apoptotic cell death is a natural program cell death, uh, for example, to prevent tumor formation. Um, and then while necrotic cell death is a premature death of cells in living tissue. This is caused by external factors such as trauma, infection, toxins. So the brain areas you can visualize this atrophy or damage are the hypothalamus, which in this case is important in fear response, the amygdala, which is important in processing memory, the hippocampus, which is involved in spatial learning and memory, and finally the substantia nigra, which is important in motor control. Another process affected by this injury is the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, or the HPA axis. In an average HPA axis, a stressor begins a top-down process of releasing hormones resulting in glucocorticoid secretion and the associated metabolic effects. To be able to develop this process appropriately, the first week of life is crucial. So what are the outcomes uh, that this actually has? Long term, there are effects on the central nervous system. These are things like cerebral palsy, epilepsy, and intellectual disabilities. The most prevalent of these in current research is cerebral palsy, which is a collective term for disorders of the nervous system which lead to problems in motor coordination. So what has been studied that gives this type of research ground to stand on? The neuroplasticity, or the ability's brain to um, change in neural pathways to be able to change 
um, has been an object of study when looking at maternal licking and grooming activity, or LGA. This has been seen to reduce fearfulness, as well as lead to diminutive stress response in adulthood. So the punchline here is that enhanced maternal care can increase the, abilities pups, uh, the ability of the pups to deal with stressors throughout life. So why change the environment as an intervention? From this past research looking at maternal care, we can see that mothers in a safer environment, in this case a closed nest box, which you'll see in just a moment, can pay more attention to their pups. This would result in increased LGA, licking and grooming activity, helping in the functional and molecular components of the offspring's developing central nervous system. So here you see some images of the difference between the environments. You can even visualize here that the mother is not paying attention to the pups um, in the normal animal facility because she's defending the area, whereas the closed nest box gives an opportunity to feel safe. The opportunity is the pointer and I didn't use that. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> so our animal model, our study used four litters of long Evans rats. The first was a control group that was used for our team to practice surgery, oxygen deprivation, and testing, which I'll describe all of in just a minute. Litters B and C uh, received the unilateral carotid artery ligation surgery, as well as oxygen deprivation, and were then placed in normal animal facility cages. Litter D, however, had received the unilateral carotid artery ligation surgery and the oxygen deprivation, but were then placed into a cage with a nest box. So how do we do this? Um, for the surgery, we used Levine's unilateral ligation of the carotid artery in rodents, which you can see an image of right here. Here's the common carotid artery. This was followed by 90 minutes in a hypoxia chamber uh, to simulate uh, oxygen deprivation. These chambers were 8% oxygen and 92% nitrogen. So then we began testing which started with a simple reflex battery of tests. Uh, these were things like eye opening, ear unfolding, incisor eruption, eye and ear twitch, fore and hind limb grasp, startle reflex, and negative geotaxis. I realize not everyone might know what negative geotaxis means. Um, so this is a test with a slanted board. Um, the rat pup is placed face down in the center of the board, and they're timed to see how long it takes them to get to the top with both paws. After 30 seconds, that would be considered a fail. So the other two forms of testing were locomotor activity chamber and Morris water maze. In locomotor activity, we used four chambers at a time, it looked like this, for five minute trials each. And this measured fear response, and um, we looked at vertical counts, which is when they're reared, like this, <laughs> reared on their hind legs, um, being exploratory. Um, and then also distance traveled, which you can kind of see how that would be measured. This is the base of the chamber. So in Morris water maze, right here, um, they're placed into the water and the time it takes them to escape to the platform um, is measured and recorded. So you can kind of see from this picture how in the first trial, it takes them quite a long time. They even pass the platform possibly until they can find it. And after subsequent trials, they'll start to remember and be able to find the platform quicker. So this study's hypotheses, um, most basically, a closed nest box environment we would expect to mean more pup-directed care by the, by the mother. This would mean that the closed nest box pups would have a less stress response in the locomotor activity, and also that they would have a quicker average escape time in the Morris water maze. And, that uh, closed nest box pups would have less brain damage. Um, specifically in the hippocampus, it would have less damage, which can be seen in Morris water maze, because this area is associated with spatial learning and memory. So here's just the study's timeline, so you can visualize when it all took place. Um, it started with the reflex battery in the beginning, and then the three days of locomotor activity um, chamber um, testing, and then followed up towards the end with the Morris water maze testing. Towards the end of the study, we harvested tissue. Um, so the brains were removed uh, after live decapitation to use a nissle stain. 
and also the trunk blood was collected to later be able to determine plasma corticosterone levels um, looking at stress. So initial stain helps to visualize the cell bodies looking at size and integrity of the tissue. Um, so if you can look at these examples where one area obviously looks less developed than the other side. As far as data analysis, um, we used SPSS as a statistical software package and set the significance at 0.05. So for reflex battery, we used an independent samples t-test. For negative geotaxis, we used a univariate linear model. In Morris water maze and locomotor activity, we used a general linear model with repeated measures, with the primary independent variables being housing and sex. And specifically in locomotor activity, uh, we also, like I said, looked at ambulatory distance traveled, ambulatory counts, as well as vertical counts. <laughs> um, so what did we find? The areas of reflex battery that were significantly different were in ear unfolding, left eye opening, left ear twitch, and startle. Um, so which you can see that the most significance was in ear unfolding, and left eye opening at 0. .000. In Morris Water Maze, there were significant differences in the invisible platform challenge days. So just to reiterate, there were two different sets of challenge days. One was visible, where the platform was out of the water, they could see it, and the other challenge days were invisible, where they could not. So that's where we found significance in the invisible platform challenge days, in that females had a aver uh, quicker average escape time in four out of the five days. So um, in this chart, the x-axis represents the five challenge days, and the y-axis represents the time in seconds. So you could see in each day, the females um, had a quicker escape time except day four. And in locomotor activity, although unexpected, we found that the control group had a higher amount of vertical counts on each day. Um, this was unexpected because this usually um, signifies um, exploratory behavior. So um, in this graph, the x-axis represents the three um, test days for locomotor activity, and the y-axis represents vertical counts. So the green are control, and the blue are the nest box. So how is this data interpreted? In reflex battery, the closed nest box group had an earlier date of appearance in these five categories, left eye opening, ear twitch, ear unfolding, negative geotaxis, and startle reflex. So this confirms that uh, an intervention, like closed nest box in this case, could help the reversal of the injury. Both groups also had a, had a later date of appearance on the right side of their facial muscles, uh, reflexes, excuse me. Uh, which signifies that the development was overall slower on the right side. This agrees with past research regarding cranial nerve palsy as a possible outcome of carotid artery ligation or dissection. Uh, the more water maze, the fact that the females had a quicker average escape time in the invisible platform challenge days, agrees with past research that has found that gonadal hormones, in this case estradiol, can be involved with neuronal development and promoting positive spatial navigation behavior. In locomotor activity, the fact that the control group had a higher amount of vertical counts was actually unexpected, like I mentioned, because this usually suggests fearlessness and exploratory behavior. But as a possible contra contradiction, uh, the control group had been reared in an open environment, so possibly be more apt to explore uh, in, new in, in new environments. So, as incredible as this study was, <laughs> there were limitations. Um, there were too few litters uh, and of different size. Um, the male to female ratios were not equal throughout the litters. Um, the nest box is not directly correlated with a, what a lot of past research would regard as an enriched environment, where there would be maybe toys, wheels, etc. Um, and then there was also no complete control group that didn't have surgery deprivation and a nest box. So I do hope to continue being involved in this study. I know Tiffany does too. Yes. <laughs> um, so my future direction um, would be to include 
more and equal size litters, and also to um, assess plasma corticosterone levels looking at stress, which we do hope to do. Um, adding some other cognitive and behavioral tests, as well as possible uh, another environment, like the what past research does see as enriched. And also adding a complete control group would help as well. So um, this entire study and the keeping of my sanity <laughs> would not be possible without Dr. Tiffany Donaldson. Um, she has been way more than just a mentor. She's provided me with so much emotional support and opportunities for success the past couple of years. Um, she's also introduced me to my newly found love for Indian food, <laughs> so thank you for that. Um, and again, my graduate mentor, Laura Grace, it would not have been, my statistics alone would not have been possible without you. I am not good at math, so she has helped me so much throughout this time. Um, and all my lab members, they're all here, and people from my work, you're so incredibly supportive. I'm not gonna cry, you guys are so great. And um, also the psych department, as well as the undergraduate research funds, um, which definitely would not have made it possible. And most literally, my parents, who would not have made this possible at all. So thank you for being here, and thank you everyone. Questions for myself? system as well for each other. Everything. It's been, yeah, definitely we know it, what, what each other is going through. So it's been, it's been definitely a wonderful year. Other questions? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I was wondering why the finding that you had where the controls had an uh, elevated number of clearings. Sort of, yeah. Um, why was it stated that way as opposed to the other groups had a reduced number? Is it because of your historical data on how many there should be? Or um, I'm just curious about that interpretation. I mean, I guess we just looked at it in a way um, where it would, yeah, you're, I mean, you're right, because it is exploratory behavior, so you would see that as maybe having, um, nest box having less of that. But um, I'm not sure if doing statistics <laughs> is doing anything. I think, um, let's see, with LMH, there were a few findings that were a bit, um, a bit confusing in general. Yeah, that's... Um, and there's a lot of variability, so I think really to hammer out any of the results, I think uh, in more detail, I think we're going to need a bigger end anyway, mm -hmm. to figure out what that was about, to see if it was a fluke, or if it was exactly. just... Exactly. Um, yeah. So, so I, do, yeah, I definitely want to stay involved. Yeah to make sure I can really see um, the study through. Well, I, I'm sure the lab has historical data so you could um, determine if it was out of line with respect to normative amounts or whatever. So anyway, just curious. Yeah. Nice presentation. Thank you. Very nice. You have a Hey, dude. You did a great job. Very impressed. Awesome. But I have a question. You said you want to add more cognitive tests, and I'm really curious to know what those might be. Because you know, I, there's a lot already. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> well, maybe not specifically like new ones, but you know, just kind of hammering out the details of what we've done already, um, and just maybe add more trials and more, you know, I'd like to do more research on it too, um, other possible. I know, I'm sure you have tons of information on that. <laughs> Don't worry, it's not a question. No, it's just more so a statement. I, I like how, you know, initially when I first saw your research and when I first, I think, heard about it, I thought it was going to be a lot more, like your intervention was going to be that you were going to inject them with something or you're going to count, you know, the receptors. And I like that it, you know, it was sort of different. It was almost like nature versus nurture. It wasn't even a versus. It was using nature and nurture together, how they... You know, like the mom licks it and suddenly creates yeah. these changes. It's not that you're mm -hmm. making them, the mom is making them. So yeah, I remember so learning that at Well Rats, but specifically how you use that, I thought was really interesting. Thanks. So, good job. So, follow-up question to that. So, also very lovely presentation, really elegant work. Thank you. Um, I 
Is, is there any way to film inside the mess box <laughs> to know if there's more licking and grooming going on? That could be something that would that would be interesting, although it would kind of, I mean, it, we'd need to make sure it wasn't, um, you know, disturbing affecting them, them disturbing them at all, too. So, I mean, our nest box was just parts that Haley's dad put together from a hardware well, store. No, I, so. I, I, I designed it so that we would be able to yeah. film within the, the, the setting without bothering yeah. them too much. We looked at different um, nest box conditions in terms of uh, how opaque it would be or the sizes yeah. and dimensions and whatnot, but um, the reason it's I don't know if you can see it on the picture, but yeah. it's open on top so that you could position a camera to see within, if you can see that open yeah, part yeah. on the top, um, so that you would be able to position a camera on there. And this, yeah, this is a, there's an of some of the behaviors. Yeah, yeah the biggest problem that we ran into with that was actually figuring out how to stream and store the video Yeah, more than the actual capture of the video itself. So Security for the cameras. <laughs> it's the, the way that, you know, yeah. me and colleagues have done it is to just, you know, measure it for the entire time that you have the animals alive and that they're lactating. We don't have that capacity. And the other way that you do is to disrupt them, to actually do um, periodic maternal deprivation and then re return them to the pups and then measure what goes on, which is supposed to be indicative of what they would do normally if you were streaming them nonstop and had that storage space or that patience. Um, or that number of graduate students or undergraduates. <laughs> um, but, but, but I'm suspecting that will be an additional stressor for these already compromised pups. And the, you know, in, in the, the wild, the mother's not going to care for a pup that is showing or presenting with any type of abnormalities. So I think it was ingenious that Lord Grace thought of this um, to you know, create an environment that would somehow induce more caretaking behavior in the, in the, the moms for these pups. Sorry, you were going to say something else? Uh, it, it's not about your presentation, but you know, I bet if someone could get their hands on Mini's data, there probably is a way you could take big slices of that, like figure out like how little coding can you do mm -hmm. to get mm -hmm. a reliable enough estimate mm -hmm. to know what's happening. Mm -hmm. It would be nice to know what's happening in that desktop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of video to watch. Besides just adorable babies. <laughs> <laughs> but we will have eventually, Alice, the, the court data. And yeah. he shows the LG, um, the indirect relationship with court levels to a, mm -hmm. a stressor. So we gave them a terminal stressor, sacrificed them, and took court blood. Yeah. I'm really sorry, I was in the class the whole entire year, but I just thought of this. Um, have you, do you have previous research with the really anxious rats and licking grooming? Because I know if you like switch moms, it doesn't really matter. If, even if it's genetic, they're genetically bred. If they're licked and groomed more, they generally, I mean, have you done some yeah. sort of crossover? It's actually like, a pilot study. Yeah. That yeah. Um, but it, it, sometimes it doesn't change it totally, but it will like attenuate it slightly. There's like some time in some of the literature. More rat babies. <laughs> <laughs> never, never, babies. No more questions? Thank you.